Hi everybody, welcome to the set of the 3400 series of Love of Quilting. We've got our brand new set here, and we just finished filming two episodes with Kathy Heffersat about different techniques, and what's great about Kathy is she has come to us from FAF. She's got this great company called Simply Everything, and she truly is an artist. And as always, in our 22 minute segment, we couldn't get through Not all of the information, <laughs> right? So we thought we'd give you a little bit of a, a backstage tour, so to speak, and some extra tips on the different types of feet that you can use with your sewing machine when you're working with free motion stitching. Thank you. Yeah. We were working this morning with thread sketching and every machine has different free motion feet. Some of them work a little different than others. Mm -hmm. Now always remember on your machine to set it for free motion. Now if you don't have a setting, a lot of machines don't, you got to make sure your feed dogs are down. So well, that's important. Let's talk a little bit about what that means when you put it into free motion Can setting. A couple things, right? Your, your feed dogs go down mm -hmm. and the presser foot these yeah. feet have to be flat. <laughs> That's right. No traction on no the fabric traction. from the underside. Yep. And your presser foot comes down, but not all of the way, because it's got to yep. be down to close those tension discs. Um, but it's high enough that you can still float your fabric beneath it. Now, the other thing that we were talking about this, this afternoon, of course, is putting some Teflon down. Right. That's a very, very important for free motion quilting. And it will help, especially a beginner who's having trouble moving stuff. Sure. And of course, the gloves come in handy, too, right. when you're working free motion. And these now, are all the little tips of the yeah. pros that make you better at what you do, right? Now, let's talk a little bit about the feet themselves, OK? I have on here what I kind of call like a floating foot. There's really, it just sits on top of the fabric. But there are other feet that are involved. But always remember that the feet that you use, if it's a specialty foot, has to have a setting for it. So this particular one, we're gonna to touch the free motion setting on the machine. I got a whole bunch of settings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Each one means something different. Right. So what's important is you set it for the one that you're using because that has to do with how the foot will bounce or gotcha. move. Cool. Now one of them will say spring load mm -hmm. and that is the feet that we're gonna spring up and down. And what does that mean exactly? Well, when people are working free motion, especially beginners, they have a trouble getting the rhythm, right? you know, moving it around. So this, what this does is it, this little bar will sit on the needle bar and the foot goes up and down and kind of bounces with you and you just build up a, a rhythm. A rhythm, right. Like As you work beat. more, <laughs> you'll also find feet that you want to see better. Mm -hmm. And if you kind of like the combination of the rhythm and that, then there's the other foot, which is uh, one of our newer ones, this, this particular one. This also will sit on here. Mm -hmm. The nice part is this just pops right in. Oh, nice. And it will use the other setting that's here. And then basically it makes it much easier. So there's a setting for, in the, in the top of the line machines, mm -hmm. there's settings for them. So you find what works for you. Yeah. So these two are the two I, I recommend if you're going to use it. And again, what I'm talking about is basically setting up for free motion. So you're always going to bring up your bobbin thread, whatever you're working on. And in this case, I'm going to put my foot down, dial in, bring my foot up, and then bring up the bobbin thread. Very, very important. A lot of free motion new newbies, I call them, uh, <laughs> they wonder why they have these big balls of thread underneath right. the machine. So that enough. basically stops the problem. And I always will tell you to get comfortable work at the correct setting, which is level with your arms at the sides. That's not always easy. <laughs> and when we do thread sketching, always remember that there has to be a stabilizer, which I'm just using a tearaway stabilizer here. And I always stitch in place. And then you'll basically cut this thread. I'm just going to move it out of the way. And then you're basically, as you see, this one's not bouncing. It just kind of floats. Right. And it makes it it's open so you can see what you're doing great visibility of the needle with exactly. that Exactly. And again, needles wise, um, if I'm doing thread sketching, I, I didn't really talk about this before, but think of the needle as you're penetrating and you want a nice sharp needle. So I always start with a brand new needle. Mm -hmm. um, again, quilting needle, uh, 80 size 80, size 90 works fine. Okay. The bigger the needle, the bigger the hole. So you have to right. think about <laughs> you have to think about that. And you do have to change your needles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nonstop. You get into a habit. You get the, the whole thing is I when I start a project, whatever I'm working on, I automatically change the needles Let's put a fresh to begin. One in. Yep. Yeah, it's much, much, much easier. Mm -hmm. So basically your free motion settings, like I said, every machine is going to be different and you're going to find what works for you. But like I said, you get what's comfortable for you. Get the That's level, right. everything else has to be the same. Practice, get the right settings yep. and get into your own rhythm. That's right. Thanks so much for sharing that Thank with you. us.